Morning, everybody. How are we doing? Did y'all enjoy the tacos this morning? That's part of being in Texas, tacos. You go out of state and you realize, and they don't serve salsa with anything. So uh, anyway, I, I love them too. Uh, well, here we're here with, uh, how are you? Oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind what I was saying. <laughs> Can I hold on? We're holding on. We are at DevOps speakers. We are at DevOps Days Austin. No longer. We don't have signage. All right. So, uh, Howard, you? He is he uh, reading here. He's uh, worked at VMware, IBM, and Oracle, yeah. uh, all in the CI, data ops, DevOps, cloud computing, containers, serverless computing, all that good stuff that uh, is part of DevOps. And uh, going to talk to us about metrics and histograms. And I'm personally interested in. The observability part because I have things that we need to observe that yeah we need to good observe. to learn thank you thank you uh, welcome to my humble seminar or session or whatever um, my name is Howard Yu um, and today I'm going to talk about metrics histograms and traces and how they can help um, improve your observability in you know, modern applications so modern applications meaning you know application that is running on containers microservices serverless all the good stuff. Uh, so welcome. Just to uh, give you a brief introduction of myself, I, w I got, got hired in VMware just about two years ago when I was trying to join Wavefront, which is a uh, SaaS you know, metrics monitoring solution company. Um, and uh, previously worked for IBM, um, d done a lot of Java and J2E work, uh, wasn't really interesting. And then before that, joined, well, I was working in Oracle doing database stuff, so I'm actually improving in certain ways. Um, live in Austin, uh, came from California. Uh, it's been about a year since uh, family you know, moved into Austin, love the place, it's, it's awesome. Um, live with my wife, my 13-year-old daughter, and a dog, so we have a happy family. And uh, I love golf, um, golf is really good sports. Uh, it teaches you all about the life, so it's kind of a miniaturization of the life. I, I value the time playing on the field, it gives me oxygen. And also like to sing karaoke time to time. You know, I have a little karaoke machine in my room and close the door and I uh, draw the curtain and I sing. And uh, that's, like, that's what I like about Austin too. You, know, you can sing and nobody cares. In California, I'm um, sure police would have come in <laughs> and quiet me down. But you know, yeah, it's, it's Austin, it's good. So yeah, that's a little bit, a little bit about, about myself. Okay, so um, you know, the DevOps has been around like close to maybe more than 10 years now. It's wow. Uh, and there were a lot of definitions about DevOps and people would define DevOps in many different ways. Just, just to give a three examples that I just quickly grabbed from internet, you know, nine phases of, phrases of DevOps. What is DevOps? You know, DevOps tool chain, DevOps this, DevOps that. But you know, they're, they're, I just want to focus in this session one thing that's kind of commonly up here on everything, which means continuous monitoring, measure everything, and monitoring. So obviously, it's, it's, it should be important in DevOps that you be able to kind of monitor or observe or you know check out something. So you know why seeing everything is important. Why in DevOps is seeing everything is important, especially in terms of measuring. It's, we are not really seeing everything. We are trying to measure, we are trying to quantify something, right? And that's because it gives yourself an objective valuation of how well you're doing, right? Just by looking at the code, it doesn't really give you uh, whether this code is written well or whether this code is written bad, you know, what kind of error does it have? Just by looking at the code, it doesn't really do that. What happens is that you have to measure its performances, measure it's how fast it's running, measure how well it's running. And then you can say that it's running well, right? So, but seeing everything is important because in DevOps, it's uh, one of the really important aspects about the DevOps is this continuous delivery of something that you code into the production as quickly as possible and as reliably as possible, right? The speed. So, the seeing, being able for you to see everything, or you know, many things, not, not everything, but you know, try to see, you know, all, everything is important because it gives you the speed. It ensures the speed. Speed, I mean that 
the more you see, the more broader you see, the more further you see, obviously you can have velocity, right? Um, if you're blind, you know, you can't run fast. Sorry, sorry, but you know, if you have impedance in seeing, then you're gonna hit something, right? And you're, you're gonna fall down. You, and that, therefore you cannot run. So because the DevOps is uh, one thing about the speed, we wanna ensure that you have the speed. And one key to having this speed is being able to have a very good um, monitoring or observability capability of everything that's happening in your infrastructure, in your stack, in your application, everything. Obviously, this is not this kind of speed where it's chaotic, right? Um, you know, I hope you, your SRE is not this, where you are trapped in a bus with a bomb on it, somebody planted it in this ticking bomb, and you cannot stop. <laughs> you have to maintain your speed of 50 miles and above in you know, LA traffic with uh, a driver who doesn't really have a license. And, um, and I'm not really talking about this. I'm talking about reliable speed, right? And I think the observability will ensure that reliable, safe, um, you know, speed that everybody wants. In control theory, observability in Wikipedia is a measure of how well internal state of something, so it's a black box system, can be inferred. So can be, um, you know, inferred from knowledge of its external outputs. And outputs, there are many outputs, right? So observability is not about like a single monitoring. So that's the difference between, I guess, observability and monitoring. Monitoring is a very specific subject area where you are, you are monitoring database. So it's a database monitoring, it's application monitoring, it's performance monitoring, um, you know, the network monitoring, etc. But observability is actually a combination of all that. And through those different activities, we are trying to understand something of a black box system of defining how well something is running, right? Very simple. Well, reality is not really simple, and, in, and especially in the modern applications, it's actually this. It's not a single box, right? It's uh, multiple black boxes, thousands of them, and, and in the area of containers, they appear and they disappear very quickly. Um, you know, there's, a, there's one study that says that like more than 75% of the containers, they live less than one hour, right? Very different from the virtual machines or the servers, which, you know, used to run days and weeks. Now we are seeing, you know, virtual machines and starting up, stopping down, uh, containers starting up, stopping down. Serverless, it doesn't really have any um, definite startup and stop down. They just run. Um, and this modern application observability is now a measure of how well internal state of tons of systems can be inferred from knowledge of its external outputs. So there's a, there's a definite challenge of the monitoring activities or observability of it, being able to see everything or being able to cope with the scalability of things, right? So you, you have to have a, a very good ways to cope with this scalability nature because you're, you're gonna be hit with a lot of cardinality issues. A lot of things that just, just appear and disappear very quickly. As well as the diversity because no single microservice is created equal. They're all based on different technologies. Chances are they're being developed by different teams, right? You, you, you will have 10, you know, 20 different teams that each develop their own microservices. And somehow you have to observe them in a, in a very cohesive, very, um, very, you know, very comprehensive you know, way possible. Well, everything is motion. So not everything is static, everything is moving. So with that kind of a dynamics, we, we have to have a new ways of improving our observability. And that's a challenge of modern application. So this, this session, I want to kind of introduce a three maybe dimensions of observability that might make it a little easier on that challenges. Three things, as I told earlier, one is the metric. Why is metric good in terms of observability in modern applications? I'll be talking about that. Also, I'll be talking about the histograms. Why is histogram good? What, what's its characteristics? You know, what, what can you get out of there? Right? And the third is a distributed trace. So why is distributed trace uh, very important in terms of modern applications? It's getting more important. Right? So those three things, even though they are very independent, 
and they may maybe come from independent tools. When combined together, they can help solve bigger problems, and that's the modern application of observability challenges. So I'll be, you know, in this short session, I'll actually talk about the importance of these guys, and as well as give you an example of how, when combined together, the three of them can work to tackle bigger challenges. Okay, first, metric. Uh, what is metric? It's uh, telemetry data, right? It's a measurement of some sort. It's your CPU, memory, disk space, you know, whatever, measured, quantified, and then it lies on a time series. It lies on a trend, so you can actually see the trend of something in a measurable way. So it's easy on eyes. You know, compared to reading the logs and looking at the logs, it's actually way much easier. It's way much visual. That means it's more fast for you to understand whatever that's happening, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's a, compared to radio, it's an MTV music video. Right? And, uh, you, know, you know, you know what killed the radio star video, right? So visual, very visual, very easy on eyes, and it is super convenient for you to discover a noise from massive signals. Nimble, it's very lightweight. Compared to logs or other you know, measurements, it's very light. It's very easy to compress. It's very easy to transmit. It's very simple so that you have the scalability, you have the performance of sending the metrics, it's massive amount of metrics to monitor that all at once. And then it's versatile, meaning it's number, right? So it can, you can perform maths, you can aggregate those numbers, you can analyze those numbers, you can you know, average them out, you can do many, many different analytic things on those numbers so that it's very versatile, it's very useful. And it can ask, you know, you, it can answer many of the ad hoc questions that you have. So those three characteristics can be very helpful in maintaining a speed, and the same speed of your observability to those challenges. So there's a clear reason why this works in hospitals. Very critical system, vital sign you know, indicators. And they use metrics, right? The hospital use metrics to measure you know, a lot of you know, vital signs of the patient. And you know, it works really well. When, it, when something goes down, you immediately know what goes down, when goes down, and how bad it is. So that you can, you know, nurse can run in, you know, doctors can be called, et cetera. And think about all the, you know, in, in our software world, think about thousands of patients just you know, having these kind of uh, devices hooked up. And you can aggregate them all together, which is cool. So the metrics is, is the really important aspect of your observability in modern applications. Okay, histograms. Histograms are actually kind of a metrics, but they are more in high definition, meaning that they have a distribution of bunch of metrics values, not a single measurement. The, the metrics is usually just a single you know, measurement, right? but it has the distribution of those values on a single point of time. And that's the you know, histogram. So you know where your you know, uh, metrics values lie the most within that kind of a distribution to see percentiles. You know? Rather than just you know, seeing the averages, just seeing the, min, the median values or the maximum values, and that you can now see the distribution of the values so that you can understand the data more better, but also more quicker and it, it bet, better representation of the data because you know, now you, you not only see the averages, uh, you can actually sample in many different ways. So example of the histogram versus the metrics, let's say this is a single metrics trend on a time series. Rather than just seeing the median value of something, you can now see the distribution just like this. You can better understand where majority of data lie within this particular point of time whether they are sparsely distributed, whether they are closely distributed, now you can see way much better using histograms. And this actually gives us um, a better, better understanding, and, but also the better observability of what's going on in their system, especially when there are massive number of metrics coming in. Number three, distributed trace. This is not a metrics. This is not actually the, the measurements, but it's actually measurements of relationship with other services, 
Um, so you, kn you know that within a single trace, you know, there's a, there's a thing called span where a, a microservice is, is running from you know, start to end. But within that microservices, you have many different microservices, subservices, if you may say, that actually um, take part in that execution. And the, what the trace gives you is that the x-ray scan of those calls, where, where the, each of the calls happen, how long was their durations, and whether they had errors or not. So very useful um, because they are platform and technology neutral. So there are you know, many other uh, distributed tracing technologies where you know, the, 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 it's not really vendor specific. You can really make it uh, very standardized. But also performance bottlenecks. So um, by looking at the metrics, um, well, you can kind of notice the performance bottlenecks, but this gives you um, the, the bottleneck identification from the application's transaction um, point of view. So very useful in detecting the bottlenecks. And also very useful in detecting the errors within your transaction. A good ex example would be something like this. So you have a bunch, you know, bunch of microservices or a bunch of you know, distributed transactions. They all take part in this single client transaction from start to end. But within those transactions, there are many layers, load balances, authorization, billing, you know, this and that. And distributed tracing will give you this picture. By looking at this picture, it will be much better, much easier for you to pinpoint. Ah, there's an error here. There's a um, critical path bottleneck here, and you know, so forth. So much better in terms of um, you know, understanding and also in discovering problems. Okay, so I just kind of lay down three, um, you know, different kind of a, a aspects of the observability. Consider them as like kind of a superheroes on each of their own um, respect. So the next question will be, how can they work together? How can you make these um, nice three guys work together to solve different problems? I'll give you an example, very quick one, because I'm running out of time. So let's see, there's a microservice called the shopping, and this is just an illust illustrative point only, but this will give you a really good story of how these three things, metrics, histograms, and distributed tracing, uh, works together uh, to solve a single problem. This is a typical red chart, so it has a request, the error rate, and the duration. But notice how the duration is composed of P95, so the, the, the percentile based on the histogram data. And what the P95 does is that rather than displaying averages just like these guys, this actually discover, uh, displays everything from a 95 percentile perspective of all the durations. So you're not really getting a averages or median, you're actually getting um, the P95 value of it. And as you can see, when we did the P95, uh, it looks pretty high. There's a surge of something that's affecting the duration of the transaction, right? So using the histogram, you can actually get the signal of something not good relatively accurately. And this is the actual kind of a transaction that was constituting that P95 of all the you know, durations. Most of the majority of the transactions were actually behaving well. But when you raise that histogram to P95, there were some handful of transactions which would have been hidden if we you know, kind of calculated a median or you know, average it out. Um, that actually was problematic areas. So we now have a bunch of order shirts that's actually affecting a lot of the you know, slower delays in the transactions. So that's how we use the histograms to just quickly kind of narrow down the areas where we want to look, take a look at it. After that, we can actually look at the distributed tracing. So focusing our attention to this order shirts, right, which have this long duration, we can actually take a look at that trace. This is uh, one of the examples of the distributed trace where it shows a critical path. And among those paths, ah, the packaging application, the packaging microservices in this case, is actually spending the majority of time wasting you know, or you know, utilizing majority of the delays uh, on this order shirts. So now, from that holistic order shirts point of view, we can actually take a look in more detail pinpointing, ah, the packaging is actually where we want to look at it. Now, by using this um, kind of a detail, we can go to the packaging dashboard to look at the actual metrics 
that's happening on the packaging. So now we are going back into the metrics and taking a look at this duration problem. And quite, quite fortunately, we discovered some of the similar looking patterns. This seems to be related to the rise of the response payload, right? So the package response payload was pre, pre high during that delay and also the response payload as well. So by looking at the metrics again from those trend, you know, microservices, uh, we can kind of in, it, it deduce that maybe the duration is coming from the fact that there were um, higher payloads than average as happening. Maybe, maybe there was a code that was not really optimized or maybe there was just uh, IO problems by handling this large payload or maybe the CPU was not adequate. But whatever that is, we now understand better of where we need to take a look at it um, and then lead our you know, engineering activities or efforts into uh, mitigating that problem. So, um, you know, by combining these three, you know, differently looking uh, observation, you know, monitoring technologies, the metrics, histograms, and traces, we can actually uh, help all of our DevOps efforts into pinpointing to the right direction. And this actually is my conclusion. Seeing everything will move fast. We will move the DevOps fast, and that's, that's uh, core to what we are trying to do. Historically, you know, everything, uh, not, not in terms of the engineering, but all the things in nature, all the things uh, in human history, the speed was an essence. And, um, you know, not, not only the speed, but the, the, the control speed was the key to a very successful, you know, um, you know, things. And then using these guys together, the metric, the histogram, the distributed trace, ensures and helps the DevOps activities in, in a sense that it will improve the observability challenges of modern applications because the modern applications, everything is moving so fast, everything is very, very scalable um, and very, you know, um, has a high cardinality. But by having the metrics as histograms and distributed tracing, which is more adaptable, I guess, in those kind of situations, we can easily use them to um, solve many of the riddles. Yeah, I think that's um, pretty much what I kind of prepared for today. So um, I hope this was helpful. Um, it's not anything specific to any technologies or the vendors, but I think these three things are becoming more and more important in the, in the, in the DevOps world. And if, if you are using those three technologies already, great. You know, you know it's, uh, it's awesome. But if you haven't really been using these sort of technologies, I hope that it was um, kind of informational for you guys and also um, got, got you some you know, ideas to you know, try, try something in the near future. But you know, thanks for listening in, um, and um, you know, hope you enjoy the rest of the DevOps day. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay. Okay. All right, everybody, we've got a little bit of a break, and then we'll have our next speaker coming up.